Hello, my beautiful pal number ones. Today's reading is going to be, how do people describe you? So we're gonna jump right on in with tarot cards and I do have some oracle cards just to get some more information, okay? Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. Wow, that was a terrible shuffle. <laughs> Make these messages as clear as possible, please, universe. How, does, how do people describe pal number one? Make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number one? Please make these messages as clear as possible. I don't know why I'm here, cutthroat, like cutthroat. Like, I don't know, cut off, like something with a cut, something cutting. I don't know if you got a cut on you, a cut on your arm, like you got a cut or something like that. Or scissors, I don't know. Make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number one? I don't know if you a chef or you cook, you like to cook maybe, like bacon or something like that. How do people like to describe, how, but how do people describe pal number one? Make these messages as clear as possible. All right, so we have here, the two cards that came out is the Will of Fortune and the Eight of Swords. Um, the Eight of Swords is Gemini energy. Make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number one? I'm gonna keep these two here. How do people describe pal number one? Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. It's happening. Okay. I don't know why, but I feel like I should take these as well. We have the King of Pentacles, um, King of Pentacles, Four of Wands, and the Ten of Pentacles. So we have Virgo, Capricorn, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus energy, Four of Wands is Aries energy. And I'm going to get a couple of more. How do people describe pile number one? Give me one more card. And we have the Page of swords bottom of the deck is the queen of wands so curiously but gemini energy we also have here the six of swords six of swords is um what is the six of swords aquarius energy so you know it is you know this is interesting this is this is nice all right excuse me so the way that people um the way that people describe you and we have eight, eight of pentacles at the bottom um, of the deck. So the way that people describe you to others is definitely someone that has a lot of money, okay? You have a lot of money. You have some type of a great fortune or something like that. You can be married into money or a, a family member around you may have gotten married into um, money. And ten of pentacles for me is always like generational wealth. Like I feel like... Um, People describe you as someone that has a lot of money, that likes to dress nice. You like to keep yourself on a very high pedestal. I'm, I'm hearing bougie, very much bougie. There's nothing wrong with that because if you got it, spin it, splurge on it, do all that extra stuff. You got that money for a reason. Um, With the bottom of the deck being the Eight of Pentacles, I feel like something that um people tend to like sometimes mention is that you're someone that's very hardworking. You're very dedicated. You're someone that is, um, you may be a perfectionist, You um, a perfectionist. Some of you could have um, OCD, it doesn't have to be. But that's how some people describe you to others. Someone that's very hardworking, consistent, you know, things like that. Um, another thing is with the four of wands being here, you could be someone that's in very much of good health. I feel like people describe you as someone that has a very nice home. If they ever been into your house, that your house is clean. It's either your house is clean or your house is dirty. Because I don't know why I'm getting that. I heard stink. So <laughs> some people may um, even be jealous of how you live or where you live or something like that. And they may be giving people a forced narr narrative of where you live. I don't know why I'm getting that, but that's for somebody. Um... I feel like with the Eight of Swords being here, I feel like um, a way that people describe you, sometimes people may call you fake or phony or something like that. Like you have a false mask, you're not being your true self, um, that you're not being authentic. I don't know why, but that's how some people may describe you. Um, like I said with the Will of Fortune, that you, because we have the Will of Fortune, the Ten of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, you have some type of money, some type of fortune, you have something like that. But with the Will of Fortune, I feel like um, the way that people describe you is that you have a lot of good karma that comes to you or you're someone that's very blessed. You're very lucky. It's like you always at the right place at the right time take that as it resonates um with the page of swords being here i feel like another way oh, another way that people describe you is someone that's in um i don't want to say not the public eye but you definitely get a lot of attention a lot of people like to turn their heads and look at you um they look at you head to toe so like i, I feel like you could be someone that's like a name brand person like you like a, wear a lot of name brand if it's not a lot of name brand then you wear clothes that don't have any name brands but it looks really good or if some people may look at your clothes to see if your clothes is fake or something like that i don't even know why people are even invested like that but anyway um yeah 
But def- I, you know another thing too, another way that people describe you as someone that's very book smart, you could be someone that is very well educated or you like to read a lot of books or you've read a lot of books or something like that. Or you could even be someone that's really good at telling stories. Um, I feel like another way that people de- um, describe you is someone that's very firm. You have a lot of firm boundaries. You like to have things a certain type of way. We don't have any cards that has anything to do with, with boundaries for real. But Eight of Swords kind of remind me of boundaries. But I think you're someone that likes to um, set very healthy and... You know, you like to keep those boundaries because you like people to respect you in a certain type of way. You want people to see you in a certain type of way. I feel like you are definitely someone that's probably very much of the breadwinner. You could be someone that's a little bit older. It doesn't have to be. And when I say older, I mean older than me. (laughs) Um, So, like, maybe I'm going to say, like, 30, 35. I've seen... uh, I'm 27, 28. It's not really older than me. Same shit. But I've seen those age 28, 29, 39. But, yeah. I don't know... Those numbers may have some type of significance to you. Let's get some more information, baby. Please make these messages as clear as possible, universe. How do people describe pile number one? How do people describe pile number one? Okay, this one wants to come right on out. How do people describe pile number one? How do people describe pile number one, universe? How do people describe? Okay, two cards came. Wow, two cards came right on out. Bottom of the deck here, we have protection. I feel like you're someone very divinely protected. I don't know why I'm hearing deep rooted. Some of you may have very interesting ancestors, or your ancestors and your spirit guides do not play with you at all in any way, shape, or form. I feel like you are. You have. It's not even just you that's blessed. I think you have a whole family that is blessed, um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, Another way that people tend to describe you, I feel like you're very given. I feel like um, if you have it, you're giving it to them or you giving it to people or something like that. If someone needed help or if someone even needed a place to stay, you will be willing to allow that person to stay as um, not as long as they want, but as long as they may need to or however long you may feel comfortable allowing that person to stay there. So we have openness here. I feel like... Um, I want to say you a major manifester, but I don't even think that you intend or try to manifest manifest man, manifest for some of you. I feel like um, when you say it and you want it, it just happens or you just always at the right place at the right time, like I said, with the Wheel of Fortune, okay? We have security here. The way that people describe you is that you're very secure. Um, and like I, I, what I mean by that is, like I said, your family, you, um, very much very blessed. And I feel like you have... Some of you have very much like generational wealth or what you're doing right now is going to set you up for generational wealth. And that's how people describe you. I feel like you could be someone, I don't know why I'm getting stock or something like that. One of your stocks that you have or something like that, like you're really good with stocks for some of you. Some of you could be really good with stocks. We have stillness here. The way that people describe you is that you're not someone that rushes. You're not someone that's into all that extra bullshit. Um, I feel like stability money family is what is most important to you and that's a that's one of the main things that people describe about you is that you like to you know like to be around family you probably are, are a homebody you like being home um you're someone I, i'm seeing popcorn like you you're really a very a chill vibe i'm getting please make these messages as clear as possible universe how do people describe pal number one i think i only want two of these cards how do people describe pile number one? Make these messages as clear as possible. Just give me two cards. How do people describe pile number one? How do people describe pile number one? Okay, so we have purpose and we have forgiveness. Um, we have purple and orange. Okay, purple is, is a card for a color for intuition. Orange is a color for like um like road openings, new doors, new beginnings, new paths, stuff like that. Okay, so people describe you as someone that is very forgiven. I feel like you're someone that knows your purpose on earth. And it's just like you know that you're a blessing in a lot of people's lives. And you're very happy with that. I feel like you're someone that doesn't really hold grudges because you don't have time to hold grudges because you're so busy. You're so booked and busy. So it's like really you don't have time to worry about who likes you, who don't like you, stuff like that. Okay. How do people describe pile number one? Make these messages as clear as possible. Give me three cards. How do people describe pile number one? How do people describe pile number one? How do people describe pile number one? Okay. Uh, look at that. You have money in some way, shape, or form. Like, if you don't have money right now, you are going to have money. You're going to, you're setting some type of generational wealth. Something that you do is going to benefit you in the long run. If you don't have the money, okay? How do people describe pile number one? The number eight has significance to you as well. August, maybe. 
How do people describe how number one make these messages as clear as possible? We have number 17. See, eight, gift. How do people describe how number one? How do people describe how number one? Give me one more card for how number one. All right, and then we have number 14, meshes of concern. Um, we have at the bottom of the deck, main male. So the way that people describe you, some people may even with the main with the main male to the four wands. It doesn't have to be. Some people may describe you as someone that has like a soul contract to somebody, or you are with the love of your life. Something within that nature, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but number seventeen gift. I feel like people find you to be very gifted, and you're very like I said prior to you're very giving. Okay, you like to gift people. You like to if you don't know what to give somebody, you probably giving them a gift card or something like that. You give out the best gifts. I'm get, getting as well. You could be someone that's very spiritually gifted in general. Like I said, you could be a major manifester without even knowing it. We have number fourteen messages of concern. People describe you as someone that's very caring, and you like to make sure people are okay. If someone's having a rough day you like to shoot them a text like shoot them an email however it may however your situation may be just to see how someone is um doing or whatever um but yeah my beautiful pal number one that's all i have for you I hope that it resonated if it did let me know in the comment section i will catch you guys in the next one peace out baby love my beautiful pal number two today's reading is going to be how do people describe you so we're going to hop right on into this reading we're going to start off with your tarot and then end it with some oracle cards so let's hop in I hope you all are doing well. Thank you guys for liking, comment, sharing, and subscribing. Thank you guys for your donations, tips, booking readings with me. I'm grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. How do people describe pal number two? How do people describe pal number two? Make these messages as clear as possible, please, universe. All right, we have the Justice card, Libra energy. How do people describe pal number two? How do people describe pal number two? How do people describe pile number two? Make these messages as clear as possible. All right, we have the full card, Aquarius energy, a lot of air energy here. How do people describe pile number two? Make these messages as clear as possible. Oh, wow, we have the star card, Aquarius energy again. How do people describe pile number two? Oh, too many cards. I'm gonna take this one because it fell out. We have the page of cups, um, Sagittarius, nope, um, Aquarius, Libra, what the fuck? <sighs> Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. How do people describe pile number two? All right, we have the Two of Swords again with the air energy. So that's Libra energy again. How do people describe power number two? How do people describe power number two? Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. Wow, we have the Ace of Cups. So you could have water and air placements heavily in your chart. Bottom of the deck overall energy is the Ten of Swords. We also have here the Three of Swords. A lot of air energy and then we have the magician okay so the way that people describe you you're definitely someone that's fair with this justice card being here you are fair okay you're someone that likes to see both sides of the of the spectrum i feel like you're someone that's very well balanced um i feel like you usually are always the mature one you are usually like the mediator um you're the person that um you like the tiebreaker all the time <laughs> i feel like you're very neutral you have a very neutral kind of energy to you whereas like I said, like when people are, let's say there's a spack or a back and forth going on, you usually are like, when I say the neutral party, like you're friends with like both sides of the party or you're related to both sides. So it's just like, damn, like what am I supposed to do? Um, but you're definitely someone that's very fair. So if someone is not making sense, you're going to be vocal about that. Like, hey, you know, I don't agree with this, that, and that. I don't think that you should have said it like that, blah, blah, blah. I feel like some of you can be very um, soft-spoken. It does not have to be, but that's what I'm getting here. You're not someone that likes to yell. I don't think you like confrontation. I don't think you like arguing and stuff like that. Um, that's how people describe you. Like, you know, pound number um, pound number two, you gonna, you got to chill out. You don't got to do too much because pound number two is very chill, very calm. Um... With the full card being here, I definitely do feel like you're someone that likes to try new things. You like to take leaps of faith. You're someone that maybe likes um, enjoying different parts of the world. You like trying different foods. If you go to a restaurant, you would try every... Like, you would go back to that restaurant just to try every single thing on that menu. You're someone that's very adventurous. Adventurous. I feel like you're someone that's very spontaneous as well. Um, I feel like you're also someone that's very loyal. Okay, the full card to the page of cups. I feel like you're someone that's very funny as well. And I think people don't know what to expect with you. I feel like some of you may have, um, I'm seeing a fish and a dog in these pictures. So you could be someone that has like a animal familiar. I'm not too sure what the terminology is or what exactly that means. But I know that like if you ever seen Sabrina, that cat that she had, if the cat, I think the cat name was Spellman. 
that was her familiar, you know, that was her, her male companion. You know, I feel like some of you may have fur babies or fish or something like that. You have, or, or you maybe a childhood, um, dog or cat or something like that. Right. That's going to resonate for a lot of people. I know a lot of people have animals, even a hamster I'm getting here. Um, with the star card being here, I feel like people describe you as someone that shines very brightly. You are someone that um, you get attention without even trying to get attention. I feel like um, people may look at you for my ladies. No, nah, fuck that because I know men get that type of stuff. I'll be looking at men like they eye candy all day. <laughs> but um, I definitely do feel like people describe you as somebody that it's like people tend to undress you with their eyes all the time and you maybe you have like a really nice body you could be someone that has a very pleasant face you know stuff like that people tend to look at you and be like all right you know what f it this is this i like you <laughs> um i feel like the way that people describe you is definitely someone that um you could be very vulnerable if you're not vulnerable it's like the people around you are able to be very um, vulnerable with you or very transparent and be able to talk to you like freely without being judged. I feel like that's how people describe you with the two of swords being here. You are someone that is very like, a, I think I said impulsive earlier, um, spontaneous or something like that. I feel like you, you tend to cut people off a lot because you like to, you, you don't like confrontation. Like I said earlier with the justice card, you don't like confrontation. You don't like arguing. You don't like the back and forth thing, the spackles and stuff like that. So sometimes you may cut people off quicker than you are, you need to, because you don't want to argue. So let's say someone is trying to like, let's say t someone is trying to tell you how much they love you or whatever the case may be, however the argument may go. It's like, if that person raises their voice and they louder than you you'll look at them you'll be like okay next thing you know they don't hate from you from a while you'll, you'll distance yourself or whatever the case is like you still love them but you at a distance now with the ace of cups being here people describe you as someone that's very loving okay you're very loving and when you do love somebody you love them wholeheartedly it's not like you're you're trying to play with them you're trying to play with their feelings and emotions no once you say here this is my cup and I, i'm giving it to you this is for you like i said you're very loyal with the Ten of Swords being the overall energy for this pile, it's kind of weird. People may just um, describe you as someone that may have passed away, an old family member, an old friend or something like that. Um, so when people describe you, like they always bring that person up. Maybe you have a twin or something like that. Um, they tend to bring up someone that may have passed away, either recently or in the past, right? And that's how people tend to describe you. Um... That's what I'm getting with that card. I feel like you're definitely a heartbreaker. Like I said, you are very impulsive with the three of swords being at the bottom of the deck. Someone that's just like, you know, you're not intending or trying to hurt people's feelings. It's just, you know, it is what it is. Let's get some more information, okay? Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. How do people describe pal number two? How do people describe pal number two? Please make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number two? All right, we have stillness. How do people describe pal number two? All right, that's it. We have inner peace. How do people describe pal number two? Give me another card, please. How do people describe pal number two? And we have potential, okay? And we have power at the bottom of the deck. Interesting. So the way that people tend to describe you is, but like I said with the still, um, with the justice card, you're very cool, calm, and collected with the stillness. Like you don't, you don't do too much with the inner peace. You like to be at peace. You like to, you know, be calm. You like to be relaxed. A lot of you may enjoy swimming or going in the water or something like that. Also, like I said prior to, you may have a lot, a lot of water placements. Um, we have the put, um potential. I'm looking at the star card here. I feel like people describe you as someone that has the potential to be a star, to be in the public eye be famous, something like that, get a lot of recognition, get a lot of attention. That's how people tend to describe you. You have the potential to do and be whoever you want to be. Um, let's get some more information. Make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe, describe uh, pal number two? Make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number two? Give me two cards for pal number two. How do people describe pal number two universe? Okay, we have grief. How do people describe pal number two? And we have balance. Okay, um, bottom of the deck, we have freedom. So we have grief and we have balance. Grief says, I understand that losing something is an opportunity to appreciate it. We also have balance. It says, I bring the state of peace, harmony into my world. And I do so without judgment. So I feel like um people may describe you someone could have recently passed away in your life or something may have ended. But I'm getting more so someone may, may have passed away. Excuse me. 
like I said, either this could be recently or in the past or something like that. And people tend to describe you, describe, like, when they describe you, they bring that person up or they bring that situation up. Um... I feel, I feel like people describe you as someone, like I said, with the Justice card, very balanced. You're at peace. You're, you have all your chakras aligned and stuff like that. You are a very aligned person. Um, but this grief, I don't know why or what I'm... People may describe you also as someone that may have lost everything and got it back or something like that. Let's get some more information with... Kipper, make these messages as clear as possible. How do people describe pal number two? Make these messages as clear as possible, universe. How do people describe pal number two? How do people describe pal number two? Okay. We have number 11, sudden wealth. Very lucky, very blessed individual. How do people just... And number 11 also is a number for balance. How do people describe pal number two? And we have number 39, community. How do people describe pal number two? We have number 25, high honor, bottom of the deck here. We have number 35, pathway. So people describe you as someone like, a, um, you, you have a lot of friends within number 39 community. A lot of people know you. You have a very familiar face. People may come up to you and be like, oh, you, you look kind of familiar. Like, oh, I think I've seen you somewhere. Or this is like something that you've heard you know, through your life or whatever. I think that's the same thing I just said. But number 25, high honor. You are a very high value kind of person. You are someone that's very well respected. Like I said, with the community, you're very well known. People know you around the area, around the hood. But if you live in the hood or in the suburbs, whatever you got going on. <laughs> but yeah, my beautiful pal number two, that's all I have for you. If it resonated, let me know in the comment section. Like I said earlier, thank you guys for liking, comment, sharing, subscribing, donating, and booking readers with me. I appreciate it. Last but definitely not least, we have my beautiful pal number threes. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing. Thank you guys for donating and booking readings. I am truly thankful and I'm very blessed because, like, come on now. Y'all don't play with me. I'm always booked and busy. I'm grateful, okay? So, pal number three, let's talk about it. Today's reading is going to be how do people describe you. We're going to start off with the tarot and then we're going to end it off with some oracle cards, okay? Okay messages as clear as possible how do people describe how do people describe how number that just scared the hell out of me how do people describe how number three one more shuffle i'm sorry about the background noise okay how do people describe how number three People. You know, a crazy thing is, you may be someone that has a lot of uh, tower moments, a lot of disruption, uh, disruptions, things just popping up in your life. Mm. How do people describe pile number three? It's like you can't get a break sometimes. How do people describe pile number three? How do people describe pile number three? Okay. We have the world card here. How do people describe pile number three? We have the Ace of Swords, which is Aquarius, Libra, Gemini energy. How do people describe pound number three? How do people describe pound number three? Universe, okay. We have the Strength card, Leo energy. How do people describe pound number three? How do people describe pound number three? How do people describe pound number three? How do people describe pile number three? Okay, we have the six of cups, which is um, Scorpio energy. How do people describe pile number three? Um, we have the four of cups. I was hoping this card came out. We have the four of cups, Cancer's energy. How do people describe pile number three? We have the temperance card, Sagittarius energy. Um, we also have here the Queen of Wands as the overall energy. And we have the Knight of Wands here. And we also have the Sun card, so some more Leo energy. Okay? So you can have a lot of fire, water, and air placements. Take that as it resonates. Um, With the World card being here, I definitely feel like you're someone... People describe you as someone that is uh, very... 
I feel like you've been to a lot of different places. You could have traveled a lot. You could be someone that's at a distance, your own self. With the Four of Cups to the World card, you could be someone that's very much at a distance. I feel like if you could and if you can, you do just book um, trips and you, you just, you be out. I feel like you're someone that likes to... Um, I think you're someone that's like that's very well connected with the world card. I always think like World Wide Web. So you can be someone that's very well connected. You can be someone that's very popular on social media. And there's a lot of different type of social media platforms. You could be also someone that does webcam things and stuff like that. That's how people describe you. Like, oh, you could be a webcam girl or a guy. You make a lot of money if you was to stream or something like that. Or maybe you do live stream. Um, like so you could live stream games, cooking. There's a lot of shit that you could live stream, so that's how people describe you. People talk about that if you do do that. Um, I feel like with the Ace of Swords, someone finds you... Someone... Um, the, I said someone. People describe you as someone that's very vocal, very knowledgeable. I feel like you're very victorious. You always, you always come out on top. I feel like you're very sharp with your, your tongue. I feel like your tongue is like a dagger. You don't like people disrespecting you. You don't like people like coming at you crazy. And I hope that you can hear me because that shit in the background is irky, irky, irky. Um, but yeah... I, de I definitely feel like with this temperance card, you're someone that gets mad really fucking fast. Okay. I feel like with the um strength card, the Ace of Swords, the strength card, and the temperance card is definitely given you do not lack, you don't lack confidence. Like, you're very a very confident person. I feel like you're someone that's very, um like I said, prior to, you are someone that has, you don't, I don't think you, you may not always have a nasty attitude, but you may have been called a bitch before. Okay, people may find you a little bitchy, but I feel like you are like that and you carry yourself as such because you don't want nobody playing with you. You don't want nobody disrespecting you, things like that. Okay, um, with the Four of Cups, I, I feel like you're someone that's very disconnected, very distant. I feel like um, you don't really focus on love too much. You don't focus on who's trying to offer you a cup of love. That's how people describe you, is that sometimes you don't notice who loves you and who is trying to love you and care about you. And, you know, some you that happens because I feel like you're someone that's very busy. Like, you always on go or you, I don't know. You can also have, like, a toxic ex, maybe a stalkerish kind of ex. And that's how people describe you. They always bring up that, that one fucking ex. And you're just like, you, why are you only talking about this ex and not everything else that I have going on right in front of me? Take that as it resonates. But... That's how people describe you. Like they try to describe you about the person, like by the person that she was dating and who you, who who you are dating. If you are dating anyone, I don't. Uh, yeah, with the six of cups being here, I feel like people also describe you as someone that is. Um, people always want to come back to you. People always want to, like I said prior to, with a cup of love, try to offer you some love or try to get back with you, you are, like, always the ex that got away, you're the, um, one that, uh, you, like, the, the greatest friend, like, you're one of those people that, even if you and a person don't speak for a while, like, uh, like I said, a friend, if you and a friend don't speak for a while, you haven't missed a beat or anything like that, I feel like you're very authentic, very true to yourself, and that's how people describe you, I feel like with the ace, um, I said the ace, with the queen of wands as the overall energy, you're someone that's very attractive, you're very passionate, you're very someone that's career driven, um, like I said before, you, you don't tolerate the bullshit, right, I feel like you're very fragile, that's why there's certain things that you don't tolerate, and you, like, you having like the bitch, the resting bitch face, or you be as someone that has that face, like don't even, don't bother me or whatever. I feel like that's a coping mechanism, and that's how people describe you. Like you are, you are very delicate. I feel like you yourself are very delicate. All right, so let's get some more information, baby. Let's get some more information, honey. Make these messages. As clear as possible. How do people describe pile number three? All right, we have focus. How do people describe pile number three? How do people describe pile number three? We also have here action. How do people describe pile number three? How do people describe pile number three? We have courage, and at the bottom of the deck here, we have community. Okay. Like I said, you're very delicate. Do you see all this water in these pictures? 
your emotions run high. You don't play that shit. You could be someone that likes you. I don't think you like to cry, but you tend to cry fairly easily. Like, let's say you'll have an argument, go back and forth, and you sit here like you stand to your ground. Once that person leave or you walk away, you have a moment to yourself. You'll probably cry like, damn, I didn't even want to do that. I didn't want to say that. I, you know, I didn't want to be like this. I, I'm not this type of person. I can see you being like that. You know, I feel like, like I said, you're very delicate, but. You're also not one of those people that tolerates bullshit or disrespect or any in any way, shape, or form. I also feel like with this action card, because I was sitting here saying that maybe you was a fighter. Back in your day, e- even if you didn't have any fights, you were willing to fight, like, to, to, um, to defend people's honor or to defend your honor. Like I said, you, I don't really feel like you ever tolerated disrespect. And some of you, like I said, you could be a fighter but never had a fight. It happens. You know, you could be one of those people that, um, I don't know why I'm getting that. Some of you could be really tall, like really tall. So people really didn't want to bother you. Um, but yeah, I feel like the way that people describe you as someone that's act- like action, you always on go, like you always on go. Um, with the focus card, I feel like uh, you're definitely someone that is... Because, you know, the craziest fucking thing I just thought about. With the focus card and this being a snow leopard, snow leopards can camouflage with the snow. I feel like you're one of those people, right, that sometimes... I'm hearing um, Whitney Houston, you got to lay low. If you know, you know. But um, I definitely feel like you're one of those people that when you're working and when you're, like, focused people don't see you <laughs> you know what I'm saying what I'm saying like people don't see you you're one of those people that like you go in for the kill and they'd be like yo when the fuck did you even when was you planning this or when was you trying that you was like don't worry about that don't watch that <laughs> don't watch that that's how people describe you okay they definitely with the um strength card and a courage card you're very strong I feel like that's another thing too and this card also has um a, a map in the back I don't know if you can see that in the background Cause it's not trying to get clear, but there's a map in the background and I feel like people describe you as someone that has the courage to travel or you, um, are building up your courage to travel if you haven't done it yet. Okay. Make these messages as clear as possible. Universe. How do people describe pound number three? Give me two cards. How do people describe pound number three? How do people describe pound number three universe? Give me two cards for pound number three. Okay. So we have death and we also have success. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Death says, I am learning that endings are merely um, beginning. Success says, I know that there is no greater goal than to love, okay? The way that people describe you is definitely someone that, um, with the death card, maybe you could be someone that has transformed you, very transformative or something within that nature. I've, I've seen a, a butterfly, so maybe you could have, you know, transform changed or something like that you probably wasn't always like this um yeah that's what i'm giving with the death card you could be someone that's very successful people see you as someone that's very successful make these messages as clear as possible how do people describe pound number three we have number four courtship how do people describe pound number three We have number 22 at the bottom of the deck, official person. So we have number four, excuse me, number four, courtship. We have number 33, concern. And we also have number seven, message, okay? So the way that people describe you, it's like, you know it's so crazy. But I'm thinking, I'm looking at the four of cups. You're someone that, like I said, you could be very disconnected sometimes. But I also feel like you are one of those people that if you don't want to answer the phone call, you're not answering the phone call. So it's like people got to figure out how the fuck can they contact you. And I, I, I don't know why I got that with this number seven message and the um concern. So it's like, if I can't shoot you a text message, I'm going to call your phone. I'm going to write you a, um I'm going to write you like an email. I'm going to write you a letter. Like you're going to get in contact with me. That's how people describe you. It's like, it's going to be hard to get in touch with pound number three. It's going to be hard to um see how pound number three is doing because pound number three is going to answer that phone when the fuck pound number three want to answer the phone right we have number three so they got more noise in the background sorry um but number three number 33 concern i just feel like people describe you as someone that they have to be concerned about you like what the fuck you doing this that and blah blah i'm also feeling like some of you may even have been um you know you may have harmed yourself in some way shape or form Take that as it resonates. That's not going to be for everybody. That's definitely going to be for a select few. But yeah, my beautiful pal, number 
threes. That's all I have for you. I hope that it resonated. If it did, let me know in the comment section. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, babies.